from my window in the abandoned hotel in New Hampstead. I could look down over Primrose Hill to flooded London, now transformed into a cemetery of empty office blocks, whose eyes stared blankly back at me. The tropical weather had cloaked the concrete and glass in green satin that shimmered in the heat. The current habitat of reptiles, howler monkeys and legions of fruit bats. Wiping the sweat from my brow, I could hear muffled footsteps coming up the stairs to my apartment. Marilyn had offered to become my therapist her blue-grey eyes, her breathy voice, calming my nervous disposition. Sweeping her platinum blonde locks from her forehead, she explained that the Gothic Mafia did not exist and that Sinatra, the new replicant godfather, was a figment of my imagination. But I was not so sure. Her provocative glamour and firm, insistent narrative was somehow too certain. How did she know what was happening out there? I was lying stretched out on the white sheets of my bed, my body a tapestry of smeared blood from unhealed wounds together with dried tracks of mud and faded tattoos. Marilyn looked down at me as though from heaven. But a goddess of what? I couldn't exactly say. Films that flickered in the shadows, torn calendars lifting gently in the heat, Sinatra's songs floating on the dust. Her fingers had begun to massage my cheekbones, moving slowly, tucking her chin gently into her neck and rolling her eyes, I could feel her warm breath saturating my face. Marilyn purred, You don't have to worry. Boonwell told me everything back in Mexico. Nothing is real even if everything looks real in glorious technicolour. We all live in a dream that lasts forever. We can all be exterminating angels, she went on, and bring down the presidents and the skyscrapers and plant something really beautiful or bizarre in their place. But remember, you have to start with yourself Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Can you get him to help me? I pleaded. There was no reply. A psychedelic mist was seeping through the window and strange birds were flying in loops beyond the glass. They seemed to be crying, Sinatra, Sinatra, Sinatra. But as I reached out to touch her to hand, I realised that Marilyn Monroe had already vacated the building. Only the scent of Chanel No. 5 left suspended in the humid air. <laughs>